All right, I'm going to continue with the UEFI development here. I kind of want to make the graphics mode sort of choosing <laughs> a little bit better. So if we go in and we set the graphics mode, we can't really do anything with this. It just prints everything and you press a key and it just reloads the whole screen because I didn't, you know, develop it that much. If we go to the highest mode, at least in emulation here, then we can display pretty much all the modes, 0 to 29, 30 possible modes. And the last valid one is the max mode minus one in the documentation. Um, in the spec. So I want to change how this looks a little bit as far as printing. I'll probably just say mode and then the number itself, not the hash sign. And the frame buffer can probably be hex as well. But other than that, I want to make this a sort of menu where, like the main menu here, we can choose with the arrow keys up and down and press enter to select and do highlighting. So I want to do that for the graphics modes because that just seems to be easier than typing in a key here, like on the text mode, it's kind of awkward. So I want to do that and make it more like a menu. So I'm going to work on that. And then past that, uh, well, we'll see what happens. I want to try for mouse support, but I don't know if I'll get to that today necessarily, but that's okay. So I have this stuff under set graphics mode, probably. Yep. I just want to see where I'm printing this stuff out, like the frame buffer size. We'll make that hex, for example. Pixel format, I probably should have a thing to print out what that means, because <laughs> I don't know what the, the one means in here but that's okay. So available modes, that's fine. We print them all out here and debugging. So I probably want to get it to where we can move up and down like the menu just to begin with and then go from there. Um, we'll probably be constrained at least in the starting text mode if we want to have this just work in everything. Like the starting text mode here is 80 by 25, right? Uh, yeah, current mode zero, so 80 by 25. And it doesn't display all the modes, right? It's cut out at the top and maybe the bottom if it had more to display. And that doesn't help me right now. So I want to kind of constrain the modes, the graphics modes here, into whatever area of the screen we can use. And we'll say that'll be after like the header info. We'll say it's it's header info, the graphics mode info at the top. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's like eight lines. So where it says available GOP modes, I want to start the menu there, right? Where we have these these mode number choices, if you will. So what we can say is we have a menu here in the top or the, the yeah, the top of the menu <laughs> or the lowest possible cursor row. If we think of it like a Y row value for, for the text mode cursor, the lowest value for a boundary would be that first mode number zero. And the last one would be at the bottom of the screen, which is 29 here. Although if I print keybinds, it'll be less than that. So I kind of want to constrain the menu in between those two rows instead of having this on the main screen where it is um, whatever. Well, it depends on the mode, right? It starts down the screen, but the top left of wherever it's printing is zero, zero. And for the main screen, the initial screen here, the minimum menu row, if you will, is zero and the max is well, one in this case. <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's kind of like how I did the main menu, but the min and max rows will be offset in different places and that's okay. So how do we work with that? Well, we can say after we print everything here, all of this stuff, we have the available modes and we did a new line right after. So starting below that would be the top of our menu. So let's say I have that available and I don't have the text mode stuff here. So let me, let me get that again as well. I think I called, oh, it's probably uppercase. Yeah, query mode here. Just copy that, because we'll need that to determine where we want to print. So to get, get the current text mode stuff, let's say we have a min and a max, and we'll need a, a columns value. Let's say we have like a menu, we can call it min and max row, I'm trying to think semantically what makes sense here for reading. Let's say menu top and menu bottom. So the top and bottom of a menu that the cursor will be within. So the top will be wherever the cursor is at when it's starting to print the modes. We want to constrain that there. So that will be our C out mode. I think it's cursor row. If I can do control N, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Whatever mode the cursor is at after it prints all of the, we'll say header info. And I'll have the bottom of the menu, which will be however big our screen is minus a couple values. So let's say right now we started at zero. Uh, minus a couple values, I mean minus however many rows the bottom of the screen will take up for like a footer for keybind info or something. 
So let's get whatever our text mode stuff is. We do need columns. Let's say max columns, probably not going to use it. But max columns, and we'll start off the bottom of the menu will be the max that the screen allows. But I will at, at minimum reduce that by, we'll say three or four or five, probably five if I print three things at the bottom. So we'll probably do that. We'll say bottom of menu will be two rows. So we'll have an empty line, but it'll be two rows above. Let's say we have key binds at the bottom, which I'll just search for that, copy it where I did it before, and we'll put it at the bottom. So menu bottom in this case right now, I'll do this after then. <laughs> When we get the rows and columns for the text mode screen, this is going to be the max for the text mode, so 25 as the default choice. Yeah, 25 as the default choice. If we reduce by 3, it'll be like on the main screen where it just has the three things at the bottom here. So let's do menu bottom, we'll do minus 3, and we'll write escape won't be shut down because this is like a sub menu from the main menu. We'll say go back. It'll go back to the main menu. So that'd be one, two, three lines at the bottom. And then we want to move the cursor back up, which we have menu top, so I can do that. So this will be the bottom, but we'll move the cursor because we want to print all the modes at that point. So that is set, yeah, set cursor position. Um, I don't remember where that is. Oh, well, I just did it above here. <laughs> so it's column and then row. So column zero row will be the top of the menu. That's where we're going to print. The bottom will be two rows above the keybinds that will print at the bottom. Okay, so we'll print other stuff here. So we have a maximum mode. And we call query and get this. So when I'm reprinting stuff, I don't want to keep querying to get the info back. So I'm going to store or cache this like in an array. So let's have, we'll say a struct for that. The only mode info I'm printing right now is the resolutions. And let me change this mode number to just say mode this. So say mode 0, 80 by 25. Well, for text mode. 1280 by 800 is my default in QEMU. But I don't want to query and do this all the time. I only want to probably get all our mode info once to start off with as part of an initialization step. So we have that later and we don't have to keep, you know, doing function calls to find out the mode info. So let's do that. I'll make another type up here. Right now, I only care about the resolution values, so I'll say we could call it horizontal resolution or width and height. That's probably fine. So if you you went 32 width and height because they're defined in graphics output mode information or just mode info. Yeah, in mode information, there's horizontal and vertical res, but these are you went 32s, so that's why I'm doing that. And I'll call this something like GOP mode, GOP mode, <laughs> mode info, I don't know. And we'll have an array of GOP modes. Right now in emulation, I have 30 possible modes, 0 to 29 on my laptop that I've tested before. It's a lot less. I might have had like 10 or 12. It was less than 30, I know. So we can set like an upper max. We could say there's like 50 or 40 possible modes here. And we could stop printing when we reach that point, even if there's more graphics modes, or we could dynamically allocate memory. Uh, 40 or 50 is probably fine. If it seems like a lot of stack space, it's not really. I mean, it's 8 bytes times 50, right? So that's 400, something like that. 400 bytes, that's not too much. Um, yeah, it's only 400 bytes, so okay. So we can fill out everything that we have here. Let's just say store available or found. I'll say found GOP mode info. And we'll just have an array for that. Okay, so let's fill those out. We'll do that here, I guess, when we're printing. Or we'll just get them first. So I'll say get all available GOP modes, or available modes info. You can basically do this here. 
and we'll print it later. Yes, I'll do that. So we'll have the max mode, zero to max. But I can also do it less than however much we have in the array, however many elements, which I have a macro for that. So we can do i less than array size of GOP modes and i less than the max. That'll be okay. And we'll call query. We'll get the info. This we'll put down there. So let's just fill out that array. Just GOP. Did I, I did it plural. Okay. GOP modes with an S. I don't know where I went. <laughs> So the width and the height, the width would be mode info. Well, I got it right here, horizontal resolution. And then the height would be vertical. All right, just fill that out. Then we can print the mode info here. The cursor will still be at the menu top, so that's all right. We could print out at the same time as these, but I'd figure that's fine. We'll do it in two separate steps. So let's highlight. Top row to start off. So you type top menu row. And we will do this and we'll print after. All right, so I had to highlight stuff. Yes, set attribute. So we'll set the attribute for the highlight colors, change the foreground and background text color and draw the first mode here, which we'll just be doing mode zero. And instead of these dereferencing, we can have maybe a little bit less typing, but probably not. In this case, maybe a little bit. I'll just print the width and height here. And then the other ones, we'll do a loop. Um, don't need to do a race size, just less than whatever our maximum mode is at this point. And we're going to do the same thing, except instead of zero, we'll do I. We'll start I above zero. So we need to know how much to print for a menu sort of page, actually, or a screen. So if we have more than like 10 or 12 modes in our default, if we have more than 10 or 12 GOP modes in our default text mode, when we boot up, it's going to print off the screen and scroll, right? I want to display however much we can on the screen. And then the user, if they move past the top or bottom of the menu, it'll show the next options if it's there. Sort of like paging, a paging system, but slightly different here. So I need to know like the length of the menu. We could do could do menu top minus menu bottom. That would give the, the length, or we could just save that value. So I'll do that here. So let, let's say menu size, menu length, number of elements, whatever name we want to use here. I'll just say length right now. So I have the top minus the bottom. So if, it, if we have 10 possible modes, zero to nine, we, this should be 10, because physically text rows on the screen that are being drawn, this should be, I think, 10 in that case, but however much we have, so we'll do that. So for one, well, I will equal one, and it needs to be less than the menu length plus one because we're offsetting by one to start off. And then we can use I as the mode number to index into our modes that we got earlier after we de-highlight the other info, which this is default, I think. Yeah, default foreground and background. And then we'll print that. That would be a one-liner. Although if we don't want to go past the bottom of the screen, we can take off the new line from the first mode and put it at the start of the next ones. That way it won't have a trailing new line at the end and mess up cursor calculations later. So we have a current mode here. I'm going to set up another thing as well, another variable, since we need different variables to keep track of where the, the text cursor will be at on the screen as far as row and column values, but also what mode we're currently in for the GOP, the graphics mode. 
So we can say we're in mode three or whatever, but if we scroll down and there's like five pages of graphics modes, I need to keep track of that three, right? It needs to be static. I don't need to make it a static variable, but it has to have information kept through query and change mode invocations, if you will. So I'll set another variable somewhere. I guess at the top is fine. Right now, I'll just make it a uint, and I don't know what I want to call it. <laughs> I'm going to say mode index or current mode or something. I know I called it current mode before, but sometimes I'm not sure if that makes sense. Because we could be going through the lists of modes on the screen, and that's not going to be the mode that's currently set necessarily. So current mode seems like a bad name. I'm going to call it mode index. Not really great, but... Uh, current mode within, we'll say, entire menu of GOP mode choices. We'll say that. So that'll start out at zero as well, because when we initially load up the screen, we'll be on row zero, mode zero in the menu, whatever the default is. The first one that's printed, mode zero here is going to be highlighted. So physically, we'll start the index at zero. And the cursor will be there as well after we print everything. So I have to reset the cursor position. So I'll do that. OK, so we don't do anything there. Just for debugging purposes, I want to stop it. We go to graphics mode. It prints everything and doesn't stop. So that's probably not good. <laughs> Infinite loops are never good, are they? Menu length plus one might be incorrect. I figure array size modes would be available since it knows how big this is. But maybe not. So max is max mode. That should be 30. Be less than 30. Zero, less than size. Yeah, so that should get all the info here. But it looked like this was wrong. <laughs> So bottom minus equal five. So the bottom of the menu here should be probably, if I don't change the text mode, it'd be 25 minus five should be 20. And then the top of the menu would be wherever we're currently at, which would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus one on the end should be eight. Plus a new line here, 9, 10. So it should be like 10 to 20 should be the positions. But that is not what printed out. Mode index is not used. That's true. Interesting. Does it print the first row to start off? It does. Okay, so I know the issue is with this loop here. Okay, let's see what the length of the menu is always good when stuff doesn't work and we'll just put this in the middle of the screen all right menu length is huge yeah that would be why um <laughs> okay The top and the bottom here, that seems okay. The stuff printed out as far as I know. Maybe it did not print out. I haven't been looking at that actually. No, it prints at the bottom. Okay, let's do... Uh, do top, bottom, and length. Printf debugging, everyone's favorite. Everyone loves printf debugging. Okay, 10, 20. Okay, because the bottom's higher. I meant to do bottom minus top. I'm thinking... I'm thinking differently. <laughs> y, of course, goes from zero and increases down. It's not the opposite. So top and bottom may be bad names, but I mean physically on the screen that you're looking at, the top will be a Y value less than the bottom. So yeah. Need this to be reversed. And then stuff will probably magically work. But that's what you get for infinite stuff. Yeah, length is 10 on that. If that text was too small to read, apologize. Apologies. i zoom in. We can do 10 minus 20 correctly. That's good. <laughs> uh, 
There we go. Okay. So now by default, it just displays 10 modes. Well, 11. 11 modes, 0 to 10. We can't move the cursor. You know, it just redraws everything on key press. And escape goes back and it shuts down. So that's good. So, okay, that's printed. So we want to get input. Current mode I'm not doing. We could get whatever row we're currently on. We do need to do that. To check against the menu boundaries. So we'll say current row we have. And it'll be wherever we currently are. We see out mode cursor row. We don't need to print the key info because we know that stuff works. I'm not going to print a string. I will switch on the scan code. Switch on the scan code, however, this returns success if we had escape. So scan code escape would be the escape key. Which is go back to the main menu, that's true. So that should return from the whole function, yeah. So we shouldn't need a break case for that case. Uh, really, I can do that. I guess sometimes people don't like cases beyond on one line. That doesn't matter. So we'll have, we know we'll have up and down arrows, right? So I have the up arrow, which right now I won't do anything with. And we'll have the down arrow. And we won't do anything with that. And we'll have a default case, I guess, that we won't do anything with. So I don't need to do this stuff unless we want to press enter and actually choose something. But I guess I'll do that later. We can do that in the default case. So by default, if we don't have escape up or down, maybe they pressed enter, so we can check if the Unicode character is the char 16t UTF-16 byte for carriage return, because that's what that ends up being. So enter key, choose GOP mode, or select, or set. Yeah, say set mode. Okay, but let's see if we can get like a scrolling menu and then set the mode. So down arrow would probably be easier than the up arrow, at least starting off. Since I can't go up into like a negative mode. So I'll go down arrow to go and produce the next sort of available modes there. So how do I want to do that? Well, we want to scroll if we're at the bottom, but we do want to be able to get to the bottom first. So let's say if our current row... This will be similar to how I did the main menu down here. I could probably just copy this to start. That would probably be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> so that's up arrow right. I'll just copy that stuff. I should make like an abstracted way of doing a menu, <laughs> like a menu function that I pass the text to draw and then have it handle sort of up and down cases, but these are slightly different, so maybe not. So this stuff is right, except instead of min and max, I'll name it menu top and menu bottom. So if we were to move up, then the current row minus one should be greater than or equal to wherever the top of the menu is. And if we are allowed to move up and we want to do so, we press the up arrow, I want to de-highlight the current row, which instead of choices will print whatever that mode number is. So this would be GOP modes wherever we're currently at. Um, no, this is why I kept the mode index, yeah. If we're going up, it would be a previous one. This would be mode index minus minus, but we do want to print the one we're currently at on, we're currently at first. So yeah, we'd print the mode we're currently at, so instead of i, this would be mode index. I don't want to just replace i. Right, so that starts at zero, but that's going to be a sort of uh, an index into the menu that we're choosing. So we'll do that, we'll move it down by one, because we want, we want to print the previous mode next. And I'll do the same thing there. So we'll move up a row. We'll highlight that one because we're choosing it now. Print the mode index, which we decrement. Okay, and then we'll reset. 
So that'll be all right. But I'm going to have another condition here. If we want to scroll the menu. And that would be... I'll probably implement down arrow first, but that would be if the current row is at the top of the menu. So by default, it is. Ah, it's not letting me do that. Uh, did I not write? 576. Oh, because I just copied this stuff down here. Yeah. Want it to. Oh, this, yeah, I don't need that. That was a whole issue. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say if I'm looking at this, the, the mode zero line is highlighted. If I want to move up, then I know I'm already at the mode zero line, so I'm already at the top of the menu. That's all that's all. It just helps me visualize it if I do visualize it right by looking at it. So if I'm at the top of the menu, then the current row would be there. So if we're at there and we want to go up, we want to scroll the menu, there's like a previous list of choices. How do we do that? We need to make sure there's previous choices to list. So whatever mode we're on, which is going to be corresponding to the, the cursor position within the current page of the menu and the overall menu, so the mode index, if that is not the lowest one available, which should be zero. So if it's greater than zero, we still have a ways to go. So if it was one and there was only, if we were on like mode one as the top of the menu and we go up with the up arrow, we want to display mode zero, right? To scroll it. So mode index would have to be above zero. That's what I'm thinking. It might be an off by one error and this might have to be one or something, but we'll say it's above zero and this will be an else condition. An else if. We'll highlight the next one in the page, but we won't scroll the choices. So let's say scroll menu up by decrementing all modes by one. So I think that would work. I don't want to move the cursor up physically. The mode index I'll reduce, but the current row, like I don't want to print above the menu, so that won't happen. Um, I could draw it highlighted wherever the cursor currently is. So we'll highlight the first row again just in case. And we do want to reduce the mode index by one. Okay, and then we want to de-highlight stuff and print the rest of the things. And that's not, I want this one. We'll de-highlight the thing. Yeah, and then we'll print the rest of the modes. So I'll just grab a for loop here. So would this work? I think this would work. I'll put braces on just to make sure. Sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes I like using that, sometimes I don't. So we don't need to scroll down by one line first either. So I can just do that. And these we can still print down. Okay, so the first line will be highlighted. The next ones will be for the menu length again. It won't be from I equals one though. We'll just do I zero to menu length. We started out the index is less but we'll have to change that again. I'll make another attribute here. This is scoped, right? Yeah, the braces mean this is scoped, so that's okay. So let's have a temporary mode. We'll equal the mode index. In this case, it would be plus one because they're all going to be after that point. And then I'll use temp mode and we'll increment that in this loop. Okay, so if we were on... Initially, we're on modes 0 to 10, but if we scroll down before and we're on modes like 1 to 11, and we want to go back to 0 and 10, the first mode's going to be 0, so we decrement by 1. And then I want to keep that because the cursor is still going to be positioned to the first thing in the menu. But all the other ones are going to be incremented from that, right? If it starts at 0 and we print to 10, then we're printing the original value up to that point but I don't want to mess with this again, so I'm making a, a temporary variable here to use for that. To use for that purpose. Okay, and then after, after we print everything, I'm going to want to move the cursor again. So we'll set that back.
I mean, that does reset position. <laughs> reset cursor to top of menu. Else we'll do this stuff and we'll set it off. Okay. Of course, if that works, and it might not, that would scroll up, but we do need to be able to scroll down as well. Except that case would be instead of this, it would be at the bottom of the menu, right? So if we move down and then we will be at the bottom, we can do that. Or if we're not there yet, if we're at the bottom, it wouldn't be, this wouldn't be true, but we can check this first. If we're at the bottom of the menu and our current mode is less than the maximum mode. Or would it be minus one? No, probably less than the max. So we want to print zero to 29 if there's 30 modes. So I'm trying to think there might be an off by one error, but we'll fix that if it comes up. We say if we're less than the maximum mode, which did I get that earlier? I got like a max value. Okay, here. Yeah, max is max mode. Okay. Okay, messing up my jump list again. So if we're less than the max, then we can print stuff out. Otherwise, we'll just move down in the current screen. So we'd scroll the menu down. Instead of decrementing, we would be incrementing. But it'd be kind of similar to this. Except a little different because we're printing everything. We're going to the top and printing again to kind of scroll them down by one. So I'd want to reset to the top of the menu first. And I'd want to reduce the index and then increment it. So we have the length of the menu. If we have 10 choices, zero to 10, and I wanna go down and see choices one to 11, or the last number would be 11, if we increment them all by one, to kind of emulate scrolling here. I wanna go, if I'm at the bottom currently, that would be mode 10. I wanna go back to the top of the menu. So the number of modes I would have to reduce by is the length, which might be 11, so I might have to do minus one here. I'm not sure. If it's zero to 10, that'd be 11. So if we're on mode 10, minus 11 wouldn't work. I would have to do minus one, I think. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. This might be an off by one error. Let's say we go back to the top of the menu effectively of the current page of choices that we're on. Yeah, and then we start printing from there. So we don't want it to be highlighted. Make sure it's the default color. And we can print out everything up until the last row. So probably this one I could end with a new line. And we'll do a for loop here. So we'll say print modes up until the last row, the last menu row. So up until maybe the length minus one. We won't need a temp mode, but we can increment our index since we're printing down the screen now. And this will work just for the mode index. It'll start at that, okay. And then we'll highlight the last row. Because if we're moving down and we're at the bottom of the menu, I'm still gonna stay there. Just all the mode numbers will be incremented. So this, the, last row, the last row still needs to be highlighted. And the cursor will be there automatically since we're printing down with new lines. So that's good. So delete that, I'll grab the highlight one. And we should be able to just do this again, actually. Because we would have incremented past it, yeah. So we'd be there, and then we'll, we won't reset. This one we don't need a new line though, I'll just do an R to go back to the start. It won't matter too much, but. Okay. Just do that. Uh, are these all off by one? Probably. <laughs> oh, 
that's gonna annoy me. Oh, these are down here. Hmm. Indentation station not working. Okay, so does this work for scrolling? Probably not, or we'll have some mistakes. Let's see. Well, I can't even move down to begin with, so that's not tr that's not right. So let me uh, not do that. That would be the down arrow. Oh, it's because I'm not printing anything here, of course, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like if you don't do the one thing you're going to, it doesn't work. De-highlight current, move down, highlight new, yes. De-highlight the current one. What do I do up here? I don't know if I need the new line for this, though. That would probably not work. Is that what I did originally in the menu? No, I did an R. Returned. Okay, so that'll probably be jank unless I fix that. But... Set attribute default. Uh, let's not do this. We'll print the mode number, and then I'll go back to the start, and that's probably fine. Whatever mode index we're on. Then I want to go down one row. Be mode index plus plus. And we can do the same thing again. And it is highlighted. So we don't need to do... Well, actually, we can do a new line. Then we don't have to do this. Set cursor position, because we'll know it has gone down from that new line. Then we just print this, and this will not have a new line. I think that'll work. So it'll print, go down, print the next. Oh, it almost worked. Should be going here, right? I just want to verify. If I press down, then I can't do anything. Yep, okay. So let's, let's see if it de-highlights the current row. If I press down, that does, okay. And does it print the row after that as highlighted? It does, all right, but then it, oh, it resets, yeah. So it goes to break, is that the issue? It breaks the switch, so after it gets a key, I'm not doing anything there. Oh, and then I do break to set the new mode, okay. Because that will escape that loop. I probably don't want to do that. And that goes the overall, yeah, so it just redraws after that. That's why it looks a little jank. Probably don't want to set the mode exactly. We want to do that in here. And then we'd probably redraw the loop. So let me get a different thing. Instead of just a while true, I'll make a, a running or get input or something. Which I already did this before, right? Yeah, for the other input loop. So I'm just copying that. We'll say, perform the same as you currently were, but after we press the enter key, eventually we'll set that off. So this will, will leave input loop and redraw screen. So I don't need that break there. Yeah, we'll just keep getting a key until they press enter or escape and return. But enter will go back and redraw as well. Okay. There, okay, that way we can move down. All right, can I move up? Up is broken. But down works. So far, <laughs> I need to see if scrolling works as well. So going up, probably because it prints that, and I don't want to do that. So print this, go back to the start, set up by one, and don't print down again. Just go back to the start, which carriage with carriage returns. Okay. There we go. Unless we're at the top of the screen, then we can't do can't go up. So now if we're at the bottom and I scroll, it gets there eventually. It's kind of jank. <laughs> That's closer to what I want, because you see it redraws all the modes correctly. But then I think it goes up by one unnecessarily, and I have to go back down again. That's what it looks like. And enter redraws the screen. Oh, and we can have longer text too. Um, okay. I can fix those <laughs> those issues. That would be whenever we draw a mode, we have to sort of clear out the line first. So I can do that. 
Let's draw something else here to clear it out. We'll draw like 25 blanks because the default text mode is 80. Well, that'd be 80 blanks. How big are these mode lines anyway? So I have one, two, three, four, five, two digit mode, we'll say eight, nine, could be four, X and four, it should be nine. So maybe like 20 some odd characters, 18 to 20. I just did 20 blanks. So blank out mode text first. And if it's highlighted, we want to de-highlight. So what I can do there is just make that a default that happens at the end. So we don't have to worry about resetting the colors. It will automatically be reset every time after we move, which is fine. So they will have to highlight and do that. So that'll be redundant, but that's okay. And this way we don't have to re-highlight here. Because uh, they'll be reset every time. So I want to do that for both up and down, just in case. Might save a couple lines here and there, actually, from not having to do that. And the default doesn't need to be set, because we'll be doing the default anyway. Okay, but that probably didn't fix the issue, right? <laughs> yeah, it prints down one more. All right, why does why does it do that? That's on the down arrow. This might need to be length and not minus one. That would probably be why, because it's printing them all out. So I go down to 10. Okay, there we go. Go down once again, we go to 11. Then we should have 2 to 12, 3 to 13, so on and so forth. So it prints the current 10 modes. Uh, the bottom one is, uh, that's broken because we don't have a mode 30. So I should stop before we print that. I less than menu length, um, which I can do that. If mode index is less than max, that seems right. Oh, less than max minus one. Yeah, because the only valid modes are up until one. Uh, let me put that as a note, though. Is mode max minus one. And that comes from, if you don't believe me, I don't blame you, but that comes from the GOP where they say the mode info. So I want to find this just so I have it recorded. Graphics output protocol, it's um, somewhere in here. <laughs> okay, it's somewhere in here under, it's, it's wherever they have the mode. It's like, yeah, like right here. It's just weird and they just stick the mode right in there. But here they have current mode of the graphics device. Valid mode numbers are zero to max mode minus one. And for some reason, that's the only place they decide to put this very key piece of information <laughs> is below a nondescript code sample. Ah, but that's okay. The valid mode numbers go to max mode minus one. You'll get an error back for probably unsupported, device unsupported or something in the EFI status for set mode. If you try to set it to the max mode, yeah, you'll probably get an error if you try to set, you should get an, an EFI error of unsupported device if you try to set it to the max mode, which in my case is 30. So you want to restrict it to 29 at most because that's where the, the valid modes are. So if we stop at minus one, that should still allow me to go to the bottom, but it won't go to 30. So I scroll to the bottom, 29 is the max. Can I scroll back up? Yes, but it prints it on the side. Interesting, and then it kind of breaks. Oh, because I'm doing this, but not everywhere else. <laughs> we probably want to blank out, but not do the highlighted color, actually. Let me blank it out first, and then we'll highlight and do the rest. Yeah. So that would also be an issue. Okay, and then the rest, we also want to do that, probably. Yeah. All the other invocations. So we'll print this. Uh, we want to do a new line. Print that, and then go back to the start. 
So that's probably why it messed up as well. Go back to the start and redraw the text. Then I don't have to do that. We print that and go back. These are probably redundant carriage returns that I don't need, but I'll just be safe and put it there regardless. Regardless. Oh, and I don't want that. I do up here because that's isolated. Okay. And we'll just do that for all of these. Because why not? So that's mode index. We'll print it there. Well, what did it have before? It had it at the end. Let me not do it willy nilly, probably. The highlight curve. Yeah, let me go back because I'm going to mess things up. I'm still going to do that, but I need to remember if I had the carriage return or the line feed along with it. This one I did, so that one's okay. This one, see, I don't have an initial new line. That's why I wanted to go back and check. I won't have an initial new line. I didn't get too much sleep last night, sorry. That's, that's going to be my excuse forever, but... <laughs> Uh, I am, of course, on call this week. No relation, right, Uncle Ruckus? But yeah, these didn't have a new line, so we'll just print carriage return. All right, this one does have a new line. So if I want to overprint the info, or overwrite it with blanks first, rather. That's fine, yeah, because it'll go back to the start and then end with a new line. Yeah, that'll be okay. That will be okay. And then this one ends with a new line. Again, that should be all right. Okay, I was worrying, probably for no reason, but typically that's what I do. And left-hand operand has no effect. 557, why would you say that? Because this has that. It helps if you don't make typos. So, okay, we go down all the way, we can scroll. Can I scroll back up? As it overwrites, that's the reason I put that in, so it would overwrite with blanks in the default color scheme, and then you can redraw and highlight, which also can lend to it going to the end. You know, it kind of overdraws the highlighted text there because I'm not doing that exactly correct, but that might be over 20 characters. Oh, with the mode info, it might be, yeah. So M-O-D-E space, whatever the maximum would be up here. So the length of this line would be M-O-D-E space 2-9. Now that's only 18. Well, that's 20 characters. I guess I'm just overdrawing and I don't mean to be sometimes. But that's okay. So we can go to the start and the bottom. Can I set the text modes? Can I set a tiny text mode? Well, I can press enter, but it just redraws, right? And then it breaks. <laughs> Which is not great. You don't want it to uh, break there. I probably need to reset the mode index, actually. That would be what... Probably why it breaks because we're going to redraw the screen of modes. Reset last uh, selected mode in menu. That would make sense. So I'm just doing a little bit of QA here, just testing. So if I go down, press enter. Now the text isn't messed up because I reset the index. Okay. Yeah, see where I'm highlighting? It's because I did the highlight color. That's why it prints out. It's a little buggy, but that's... Fine. <laughs> That'll just happen sometimes. That's all right. It doesn't look too bad. We can always do this and then do a highlight if I want. I could just do that regardless, actually. But I'd still have to do it for the next one. And I'm not going to worry about it too much. So we want to be able to choose a mode. We do have set mode, I believe. Right. Probably somewhere down here. Blit. I know blitting occurs. Yeah. In the protocol, we have set mode. So I can just call set mode with a mode number. Okay. Given the GOP and the mode number would be the index of the cursor row we're on. And after we set it, we can see what happens. 
get input false, it'll redraw the screen, it should be larger. And then we're clearing as well the text mode screen every time, so that should be okay. All right. So what does that look like? If we set the smallest mode, it's going to be kind of jank on here because, at least for emulation, if you choose a text mode, or well, sorry, if you choose a graphics mode that is smaller than the default, and the text mode by default is 80 by 25, the screen used is going to be cut off, as you see. So this, this is correct. Um, the text mode that's drawn it doesn't look right because the screen space is, is smaller than what was originally had, 1280 by 800. Now I know this looks jank as well. So there's a couple of things we can do here. You know, I can set a larger text mode probably and set a better graphics mode here to be larger. Um, some things are a bit jank here. But the, the other reason it does that is because I have it running in a window and I full screen the QEMU window. So I keep it normal like this. The, the screen physically changes. It looks jank because I was in full screen mode. And that's why it does that. Because the window is being stretched. That's not a, an effect of the thing in UEFI. That's an effect of me emulating in the window. Uh, just just for a, you know pedantry there. So 1280 by 800. I can also just increase it, I think... Yeah, through my window manager, but it doesn't make the text bigger. But if I do the maximum mode, 2560 by 1600 for me, and then the maximum amount the maximum amount of space would be taken up, which would be this on my 4K screen, and you'll see that the text mode effectively does not take up the whole thing, right? So if we go to text mode, this will reset the graphics mode as well, but I go to the largest one, and then I try to do the largest graphics mode, the text mode only takes up a subset of that. So keep that in mind. You'll have to do a custom font or somehow find and query the fonts in the system, which is under, I think, HII uh, protocols and things, human interface, whatever. But the text mode will never, probably never take up the whole screen. Now on hardware, that might be different. This is just emulation, right? Which things are a little janky with this as well. But at minimum, if you want like a clear screen example for the GOP, I can do that as well. We can do that with bleeding, so at least it's all the same color. So I will do that when we set the mode. Don't need debugging anymore. So let's clear GOP screen. It is not clearing the text screen because we already do that at the start of this loop. And obviously it doesn't work. We have a lot of black pixels, right? So let's make sure we do that as well. We can do that with blitting, which is just blitz, and we need other stuff for that, so. I don't remember <laughs> what that is. We'll probably use a blit pixel in an operation. Yeah, blit, which is short for block transfer. So graphics output protocol, BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomato. What do we put in there? We got a GOP, we got a buffer. A buffer is made up of an array of pixels. If I graphics output BLT pixel, so I'll put that here because we need something, we need a buffer to blit from. However, if we do the blit operation of just video fill, the first one here, then it'll only take the first pixel in the output pixel buffer anyway. So if we just make one pixel, call it PX, you know, blue, if we want to make the background blue, for example, but I'll just call it PX for pixel. We can set the blue, green, red, and reserve values. And even though I thought I needed mem set, I might not. Maybe my compiler's better or something. But if we set values here, like all, uh, it's BGR in reserve. So all blue, we'll say no green, no red, and nothing for reserved. So this would be BGR, whatever, eight bits each. Then we can take that pixel, use it as a buffer. It's just a one pixel buffer. So we can do that. And I didn't remember what we did. Let's just copy that whole thing. Let's just copy these two. I'm gonna erase it in a second, but... Just so it's on my screen. All right, so BLT video fill is probably what I'm gonna do, but let me confirm that. 
uh, which is down again. Okay, E5 BLT video fill. So write data from the blip buffer pixel 00, zero directly to every pixel of the video display rectangle. So our, our destination buffer for the screen for this specific operation. Uh, we have a rectangle on the screen and a rectangle in our buffer, but our buffer is just a one pixel buffer right now, which is fine. We can just do video fill to use that one pixel buffer. Only one pixel is used, delta is not used. Okay. So what we can do is have this GOP, we have the pixel, which is the buffer. An operation will be video fill to fill from only that single pixel in the buffer. And then we need source X and Y. It's going to be zero, zero. It's not going to be used. Destination will be used. And I want to fill the whole screen. So that's going to be the origin for the destination. I don't know how to do this, but I'll just do, do origin X, Y. This will be destination. I'll say screen X, Y. And then we'll have a width and a height. That'll be however big our graphics mode is. So we probably will need to query again after this. And then I need the mode info stuff. So let me just do that. Copy that from up there. I'll just do that again. That'll be whatever the mode index is. All right because I need that for the width and the height. I want to fill up the whole screen and that would be under mode info horizontal res for the width and vertical for the height. And then delta is optional, I'll do zero. So we'll do that. Looks kind of weird, but that's fine. So we're taking one blue pixel and filling the whole screen with that whenever we change, because that's what I did for my background color, it's for example. So I set the graphics mode to the highest available. All right, then it does fill it. Although what's interesting is that the text mode blue is not, you know, just full on blue. It's not even the VGA blue, at least on emulation and on my laptop, I think. I don't know where they have the actual hex color codes defined, but if you like take a screenshot and look at the value, you know, with an eyedropper tool or a color picker tool, then it turns out on my setup, blue is actually hex 98. The text color blue is 98. I don't know why, because the VGA blue is like AA or something, which is higher than this, but... Uh, don't ask me how I know, it just is. <laughs> UEFI, I'll say text color... I'll just say... The hex value of 98. Yeah, just take my word for it. <laughs> so if I set the top one and I do it, it's... I don't even think it's like a shade or two off because the color picker tool gives you the exact value, right? But here we go. So it's all the same color blue. You just won't notice the boundary that the text takes up. Even if we do the top text mode and setting the top text mode or any of the text modes really also resets your graphics mode. But what's interesting is you only get this portion of the screen, at least an emulation. Hardware might work differently. But an emulation here, we're only given the initial screen size. So it doesn't matter how big the mode is, it just takes up all of that screen size. But if you set the GOP mode, you get a higher screen. Or a larger, rather. A larger screen to work with, X and Y. And then you can, I'm assuming, just write to the frame buffer according to whatever the pixel format is and have it show up. So I will do that on the next one. Ha! <laughs> Give you a cliffhanger. No, this is a shorter one because I'm uh, not, not necessarily under the weather, but it's always fun when temperature changes like 10, 20 degrees in two days and you have to get used to that. So, um, I mean, that's good enough. It's scrolling. I probably will make the text mode a scrolling menu as well, but I don't think I'll show that. I'll put it in the repo, right, as a commit, but I don't think I'll show that just because I just showed how to do it for the graphics mode. Text mode is going to be similar. We'll have top and bottom menu variables, and I'll, I'll basically do the same thing as this for the up and down arrow logic, right, for scrolling the menu of choices. I'll just do that for the text mode as well. So 
we won't scroll on this and I don't think you'll ever have more than like 10 text modes, but I'll, I'll put it there anyway, just so it, it's consistent with the graphics modes. But on the next one, I'm gonna do mouse support to sort of end this, uh, we'll say input series of videos for text input and output. Um, I'll have mouse support on emulation. I could not get mouse support working, but on my laptop I could. And you know, you can use QEMU for Linux and whatever. So mouse and the mouse works within the VM. So I don't know why UEFI, I'm not getting it correctly unless I need to read from like the PS2 data port or something. <laughs> but I can use the simple pointer protocol to have a basic, to get basic mouse support. So I'll do that for my laptop. So the trackpad you'll see will work. And I'll probably just, I'll either blit like a rectangle to the screen or maybe try writing directly to the frame buffer to draw at the current mouse position for a cursor. Like I might have just a rectangle or a, a box for a cursor, or we can draw like an arrow and, and blit from that, right? If we make a buffer of pixel format values, however our graphics mode pixel format is set up, let's say it's VGR8. So we set up a buffer of all of these, right? For a blit buffer. And we sort of bitmap the colors for a mouse cursor in there, like an arrow. I mean, this is an, an eye bar, but like an arrow, like this, right? We should be able to blit that rectangle onto the screen with those colors and draw a mouse cursor. So I'm, I'll probably try and do that on the next video. And then beyond that, um, I'll get into loading files, right? So I'll load like a sample kernel and we'll try to set up everything and jump to it and, you know, read the elf headers or whatnot. So we'll get to that stuff. I might disable the watchdog timer and do other stuff as well. I have it written down, but that's all I'm going to do on this one. Thank you for watching. I know it's kind of boring just setting up a scrolling menu, but for better UX and for setting a graphics mode, we've got that working. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. So cheers.